Hey yo chicos and chicas, it's Kitty and I'm back again with Last Door, like I promised. And now we're gonna start chapter two. Sorry about um sorry about uh the choppiness of the last episode, but apparently I guess I have to pause again and start chapter two. So be right back. All right, so now I am back with chapter two. So let's get started. Uh, allow, do I have to? Deny, okay. Oh. Whoops, well let me refresh that. My bad. Apparently I was supposed to save it on my laptop. Why, I don't know, but if that's necessary, it's necessary, I guess. Let me reread that. <laughs> Cause uh let's do a new game. One megabyte of local storage allow. Sure, whatever. Alright. Here we go. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Oh. Oh, I'm controlling whoever this fine, this fine lady is. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You're nude? Where you took off your shirt or something? Give us each day our daily bread. Now I just don't understand. Forgive our sins for we ourselves forgive our debtors. Oh. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Amen. Skipper Rooney. Now tell me, where are you? What do you see? Mm. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. There is some breathing going on, and I don't like it. I see a hanging man. I don't like this. Ah. Uh. Oh. Whoa. Okay. It's a grave. It's a baby. Oh, come on, not the baby. Leave the baby alone. What is happening? Is someone having a nightmare? Is this Seth? Is Seth having a nightmare? When I count to three, you'll wake up. One, two, hey, three. Now, wake up, wake up. What the hell? You can rest now, Mr. DeVitt. That will be enough for today. Mr. Seth, thank you very much. That's Mr. Seth to you. Are these sessions really necessary? I'm confident that this is your that this is the best course of treatment for your symptoms for your symptoms. Now, did you ever see him again? I saw it. What did you see? Can you describe it? Don't show it again. I struggle to find adequate words. 
It looked like an eye. It was an eye. It was like an eye, perfectly rounded and dark, deep and empty, accompanied by the most horrifying, pain-filled screams I had ever heard. Inside a complete darkness where an evil dwells deep below, a forgotten fear for human reasoning, but undoubtedly still rests down inside our being. In my case, that fear has already awoken. I can understand why you are disturbed, Mr. Seth. With your permission, I would like to consult on your case with a colleague of mine, a man I've known for, year for many years who is more versed in modern physics. Uh, psychological practices. I think his knowledge and experience would be very helpful in enabling us to understand your condition. If you think it would help, doctor, I leave it in your hands. The agony grows increasingly unbearable, and if you believe this man can help, then I welcome his aid. Thank you, Dr. Wakefield. I bid you good evening. Jesus. Anthony, my friend, what really happened to you? How could you have let your wife, Anna, die so awfully? These doubts consume my soul. I hardly remember the time we spent together as schoolmates. I confess that beyond your enduring friendship, I can recall little of those years. Were your words a result of an increasing loss of sanity? In your letter, you wrote something that awaits me. A warning to ward me from a genuine danger or merely the, ra the ravings of a brilliant mind addled by insanity. Something stirs uneasily within my heart. I will not rest easily again until I go back to that boarding school and find out what secrets may lie within. Farewell, Mr. and Mrs. Beechworth. Rest now in peace. Is so he gonna have a nightmare again? What's happening? Oh, he's going to bed. He gonna have a nightmare again, ain't he? Oh, no, he's not. He's going. He's going to the boarding school, I suppose. Suppose I suppose this is the boarding school. Is there a way that I can uh, make this bigger? Because uh. I, uh, I don't like this. That's better. No, it's not. God damn it. <laughs> All right, whatever. I'll just keep it like that. Memories. Lens. Okay. Where's start? A quiet damaged mailbox. Old quiet damaged mailbox. Oh, okay. That's it. Guess we're wandering inside then. Oh. There's a postcard inside the mailbox. Get it. Dear Matthew, it has been several months and I still have heard no news from you. My brothers insist that you have been in... Have you had... Bleh, I can't read. My brothers insist that you have abandoned me, but I am sure you remain true. I know that you would never do that to me, for I know your heart and the honesty of your eyes. I got this address from a hospital in London, and prayer reaches you safely. If that's the case, I want you to know that I will always be waiting for you. Forever yours, Juliet Holloway. Okay. Well, in we go then. In we go then? No? Oh, okay. Guess we'll go this way then. Stop it. The Angel Gabriel, the school's emblem. I remember it being very pristine, but it looks neglected and dirty now. Okay. Oh, this is the, the way in to the, to the school. Is there anything over here we need to see? No? Oh, wait. Apparently there is. Uh, um, I don't, oh, just somebody digging something. What should, 
What, hey, what you doing? Good evening. I hope you're right and this indeed be a good evening. My name is Seth. I didn't know there was a cemetery here. My pleasure, Mr. Seth. I'm Frank Baldwin. Don't ask me why, but Monsieur, I guess that's how you say that. I don't know. I don't think that's Monsieur at all, but whatever. Uh, specifically ordered me to bury the corpses here. Why? I don't understand. Did he order you to bury corpses here? Why? I don't understand. What is there to understand, Mr. Seth? God has forsaken this place. Ah, don't you know? Here we take care of patients. I'm an old alumnus, alumni, whatever. I used to attend the school. It has been a long time since this is not a boarding school anymore. The building is now used as a nursing home run by nuns. A former student, eh? I never heard anybody in the village speak fondly of the school. They say it closed overnight, though nobody knows why. Not a lot was known about it. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Baldwin. I'll leave you with your work. Have a good evening, alumnus Seth. Well then, I'm gonna carry on then, because uh, I don't know what's going on. This small number, this small group of graves has been half out, has ha half hazardly arranged. All these big words that I'm having trouble reading. Was I supposed to go down here? An old, a piece of old fishing net. Many years adrift have perfectly smoothed this flotsam into a small log. Is that it? That's it. Alrighty then. Am I supposed to get that? Yep. Okay. Am I supposed to get this? Yeah. Alrighty then. Back we go. Alrighty then. Let's go back. Let's head inside. Well, at least that's moving faster now. That's good. Alrighty then, let's get inside. Hey, Miss Nun Lady. It's, uh, pardon me. C excuse me, sister? Hmm. Good evening, sister. Good evening. I'm Mother Elizabeth. What brings you here, Mr. Seth? I'm a former student of this boarding school. As you can see, Mr. Seth, this stopped being an academic institution a long time ago and is now exclusively dedicated to prayer and the well-being of the patients under our care. I see. Even so, may I please speak to Mr. Seth? I'm afraid that we are too busy to start wasting time talking about past issues. In addition, there is little to say. We sisters arrived at the boarding school after the boarding school had closed down. Everyone but Monsieur, of course. I may be saying that wrong, but who cares? Monsieur? Exactly. But you didn't answer my question. Why have you come to this place, Mr. Seth? Uh... I guess that it would be a good idea to visit this place again and perceive the passage of time. Perceive the passage of time? What are you talking about? This place will help me remember my past. If you have memory problems, I would recommend you go to visit a doctor immediately and don't waste your time here. To be honest, I prefer not to talk about it. I couldn't tell you why this place is, is so important to me, but it is a lot. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Mr. Seth. I'll allow you to stay around here. I hope I won't regret my decision. Don't worry, Mother. Thank you. All right. 
Uh, okay, okay. Lah. Did you say you take? Did you say you cared for patients? Of course, Mister Seth. We tend to both the physical and spiritual needs of those in our care. Did, Mon did you say that Monsieur already lived here when this venue was still a boarding school? Indeed, he still was priest and professor before he became Monsieur and started to lead this place. Could I talk to Monsieur? I'm afraid that's impossible. Monsieur has, has left strict instructions that he not be disturbed, not even by any of the sisters. Okay, Mr. Baldwin. Who is Mr. Baldwin? Monsieur instructed me to take him on as a caretaker. Many of the sisters find him a bit strange, but he performs his work well and complains little. Thank you, Mother. No! Mother Elizabeth. Mr. Baldwin told me that lately a lot of patients are dying. What is happening? Sadly, the Lord is taking many of these unfortunate souls. Thank you, Mother. I will leave you with your duties. Okay, let's head on this way. Ew. Um, Juliet, <clears throat> among the baggages, I can see a packet of letters bound by twine. Uh, Juliet. The coughing and hacking is, um, a little much, but okay. Where are you, doctor? I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor. Pay him no mind. He has been delirious for some days. I miss Mary Vinge, and this is my brother Matthew. Juliet, why have you left me? Why don't you answer my letters? <coughs> my letters. You see? The poor man is still obsessed with his wife. He won't accept that she left him months ago. My poor Matthew. I'm very sorry, Miss Vinge. I hope he recovers. Thank you. He's Louises, 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 Louises. All right. What happened to you? Are you all right? There was a rhythmic sound, like a breathing. But when? Last night, I felt an increasing pressure on my temples. Something dry and rough like tree bark brushed against my leg, and I saw something on the wall, like a growing shadow. I lit the lamp, and there was nothing. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Madam? Is she dead? Did she die? Jeez. He is quite a pale young boy. He is asleep. You better hope so. Pity. What? Uh, please help. Please, someone. Pity. I am sorry. You cannot be here. Is there some way I can help? Don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each and every one of our patients. He will provide you with all the help you need. If you wish, you can pray there, next to the statue of Our Lady. Do you think she is beautiful? The Virgin listens to those in need. Uh, let's go pray next to the Lady. A gloomy statue of the Virgin Mary makes this place even more mournful than if that is possible. Do we go pray next to her, or do we... Let's just keep continue on. A picture of the Virgin Mary gazing at you, supposedly to portray a sympathy and compassion for you. Okay. However, she, she seems to look more pain and sorrowful here. 
All right, let's uh, go over here then. I unlocked the door. Oh, I'm back outside. A wooden coffin, a, wo a locked wooden coffin, badly finished. It seems that whoever made it was a bit rushed to finish. Who is a monster, Mr. Baldwin? I can't rightfully say. After all, these years, I've never seen the man. Who knows? Maybe he doesn't exist. But Mother Elizabeth told me that Monsieur specifically requested your hiring by letter. I'm flattered my reputation precedes me, but I still can't tell you any more about the man. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Baldwin. Have a nice evening. Have a nice evening. Okay. Well, that was nothing. Shut up uh, with the coughing and hacking. All right, let's 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 go in here. Okay. I remember that we used to keep here some textbooks. Now there's a music box. Ooh. I feel like something's going to happen uh, after we play that music box. Dear brother, I have received your letter and I will and I'll try to write you more frequently. I hope you are studying a lot and feel be uh, feel comfortable there. We miss you a lot. When are you coming back? Father is in bed with fever and I do not feel very well, but I am on I am on medication. Today is my birthday and I'm feeling blue. It is a quiet and boring Sunday in the village. Mom is going to cook a lemon cake as those then grandma used to make. I wish I, we could eat it together. Right back, ugh, right back soon. I'm looking forward to knowing how you're doing, what you're learning, how is Scotland, and so on. A big hug. All I, I think about you a lot. Your dear sister. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Got another letter over here? January 15th, 1876. Father Ernest seemed unusually troubled today. Several times he paused abruptly in the middle of a lecture for no reason, even during his favorite class, theology. January 18th, 1876. I just realized the music went off. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm going to continue reading. Today, further, Father, er further Ernest. <laughs> Father Ernest was very irritable. Collins made a comment and it was expelled from class for it and David and even Seth. I want to say Seth. Even Seth was admonished just for reading a philosophy book. Okay, it's back. I hope Father Ernest doesn't turn his eye toward me. My father will be disappointed if I fail to get good marks. January 21st, 1876. It was very disconcerting to see Father Ernest entering class so pale and sweaty. In the middle of his lecture, he stumbled, dazed, and had to sit. January 22nd, 1876. Father Eugene taught our theology class today, even though he doesn't know the subject matter as well as Father Ernest. When we asked him what had happened to Father Ernest, Father Eugene told us that he had taken ill. What worries me is, now, is that now Father Eugene is also starting to look unwell. February 20th, 1876. It's been a month since we last saw Father Ernest. We're told he's still sick, but if he so but if he's so ill, why hasn't a physician come to treat him? My studies are flagging, but I have taken it upon myself to read on my own. I hope this helps as I must succeed in spite of the problems happening around us. February 23rd, 1876. It was announced this morning that the school is to close. None of us know why, and we can't get a straight answer from the faculty. They each dodge the question, and I am starting to think they may not know the answer themselves. Their anxiety is palpable, though they try to hide it behind a calm face. But what, does Father but what about Father Ernest? 
I hear he alone is, re is to remain after we vacate the premises. There is a picture in the diary. It is a photograph of my graduating class. I see myself, Father Ernest, and Anthony. I don't remember the names of the others. One face has been completely scratched out. Ooh. Well, that's, uh... Oh, I don't want to read that again. Why did I click that? Okay. My throat is getting dry. I need some water. There is an odd sentence written on the board. In death there is hope. In death there is life. One must seek his true nature to understand the nothing. It looks like it has been there for years as the chalk has been faded. It, it ugh, the chalk has faded in some places. I'm going to give you some water. Hold on a second. Alrighty then, I'm back. Hold on. Alrighty. I'm back. Hopefully this recording isn't as choppy as the other one. I have no idea why it was choppy in the first place, but uh, hopefully this one is a little bit smoother. Alright. Okay, so let's uh, let's head on past this since we've been here already. That was me hiccuping, I'm sorry. Photographs of people, most likely of most likely family and friends of this bed's previous resident. I think there's a letter over there. A magazine entitled Weird Tales. Okay. Sir. Alright. Let's head on upstairs. A dusty old tapestry of the Virgin Mary baby Jesus in her arms. Let's head on in this door. Hello, ma'am. A syringe next to a flask with a label that says morphine. Good evening, sister. Hmm. Sister? All this suffering... All these tears, all our prayers unanswered. What, what do you mean, sister? All these years entrusted to the Lord, praying, looking for a sign, for something that can give me strength. Every day I hear them cry, pray, scream, and die. And what for? Where are you, Lord? Why don't you answer me? Lord works in mysterious ways, sister. Certainly, yes. But I don't ask for much. Just something to go on. A path to follow. I cannot go on. Not like this. Excuse me, sir. Oh. Sister. Please. I just want to be alone. Oh, no. On the upper shelf of the antique cupboard, a well-worn Bible and rosary beads gather dust. Oh, lordy no. One of the humble beds where the nuns sleep. I'm going to come back in this room. And she's going to be dead, isn't she? She's not dead yet. Okay. Well, I'm going to head on on my merry way. A worn out, faded tapestry of, D of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Another tapestry, though I remember from my school days, the student dormitory was here. Let's head in.
The rusty old pipe communicates with other areas in the house. The tap of the shower. Just a couple of old towels. The shower is old, rusty, and poorly maintained. Let's step on out of here then. Wait, 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 wait. There's a puddle in the shower hole with something shining under the grating. I can't see it properly. No. Let's head the stitch to the net. Okay. Well. Alright, let's go. Is the sister okay? Okay. Let's head on then. Let's head back downstairs. Alright, so... Do we go in here? Mr. Seth, you're not allowed to go to get in there. And we're stuck again. That's always wonderful. <sighs> okay. Hold on, hold on. All right. <clears throat> Alrighty. So we have the postcard, we have, oh we have to go back outside. A stone eagle lies on the floor. It appears to have broken off the fountain. Apparently we need the piece of stone. Okay, so we have that now. So... We uh, talk to the nun. We talk to the man. Oh. We were supposed to give the postcard to the man. So we gotta go back. Was it upstairs or was it this way? I think it was this way. Well, wait. Blah, 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 blah. I can't speak. I hate when I can't speak. Give the postcard to the man. Mr. Venge, I think this letter is addressed to you. Oh, thank you. Leave it to me if you'd be so kind. As you can see, my brother is too weak to read it. Well, Matthew, let's see who has written to you. Oh, it's a letter from our mother. Dear Matthew, I hope you're recovering. I wish that your beloved sister and you come back home soon. You know how alone mother feels since you left. Oh, man. Do you remember the good times we used to spend, at, the three of us, at... Oh, okay. I have some letters. Oh, crap. Dang it, Pinterest, go away. Mr. Venge is making out the letter's contents. Mother needs more, uh, more, uh, I can't remember what it said.
my letters, all the letters I wrote to dear Juliet. You never posted them? But why, Mary? Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> How could you be so cruel? I had to do it, Matthew. You refuse to see how inappropriate a match she is for you. Her only interest is marrying someone of your status, of our family's status. It was for your sake I did this. I did it to protect you from that woman's treachery. No, you only thought about yourself, of your vanity. I can't bear to look upon you anymore, Mary. Well, leave me be. From this day forth, you are no sister of mine. You dare banish me? I, who have stayed by your side all through your illness? Very well, Matthew, you will have your way. I will leave you and then you will see how very alone you are. Farewell, brother. Oh, well. Thanks be to the Lord that you have come to reveal my sister's cruelty, sir. Please take this coin as a token of my appreciation. It is my lucky coin, though I hope it serve you better than it did than it has myself. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. The war the poor woman has fallen in, fallen into an uneasy fitful sleep. All right, so we got all that stuff done. All right, let's go back to that classroom. Oops. That coughing is very um realistic. All right. Okay, didn't need to go back to the classroom or anything. Okay, so I talked to the guy. Well, let me go back outside. All right. I don't need to talk to you. I already talked to you already. All right, so I'm at the beach. I got everything here. Okay. Oh. I need to go play that music box in the nun's room. All right, let's continue on. I don't care about that, go ahead. All right. Okay, let's head back upstairs. All right. Oh, what a beautiful melody. It reminds me of my youth when I was vibrant and full of purpose. I knew my path then. Oh, may God bless you, for you have given me the sign I was looking for. You're welcome. All 
All right. A lot of dry leaves have accumulated in a hole of this old rusty pipe. They're blocking the water stream. Can I use the stick to clean that? Oh, no, I just have to do it with my hands. The hole has very sharp and rusty edges. If I try it with my hand, and I could cut myself. Okay. I blunted the sharp edges of the with the with the. Oh, uh, I can't read. I blunted the sharp edges of the pipe. Now I need not fear being cut. All right. There is nothing now to impede the water stream. Good. 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 The net should catch anything coming down the pipe. All right. Okay. Can I get it now? Still can't get it. Oh. It's only a puddle of water. Uh... Well, a broken mirror. There is a protruding piece. Well, I got a piece of glass now. Oh, maybe I can use the mirror to do that then. Oh, no, I can't because I got a. Well, I screwed some up, didn't I? Damn it. Okay, wait, hold on. Can I leave out and see if I can, uh... I fricked it up. <sighs> Did I frick it up? I think I fricked it up. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm, I'm looking at the thing. I didn't. Now the bass in the nun's room. Look outside again. The net has caught the shiny object. Ooh, what is it? Teardrop. Hmm. All right. Well, let's get out. Okay. All right, let's just head on back downstairs. Okay. Let's go this way. I already told you that that you cannot be in here, but don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each. The virgin lives still in his need. Heh. I placed a glass tear in a hollow of the virgin's cheek. It seems it fits perfectly. In the eyes of a reverend devotee it could look like a real tear. Okay.
Oh, the our mother is crying? Oh my lord, what does it mean? What what have I done? What have we done? Huh. Alright. So now I can talk to this gentleman, huh? You must help me. What can I do? What's wrong with you? There is little time. I tell them about my pain. I describe the unbearable and endless pain, yet they do not listen. They pass me by without even looking at me. They say they are praying for me, but it does not cure my ailment. But, sir, I, I know, I, but I beseech you. You will be saving me from horrible torture. I will be inter eternally indebted to you. I'm, I'm very sorry, sir. I do not wish to extend your suffering, but I cannot pay for your relief at the cost of such... Pay for your relief at the cost of your life. You ask me to shoulder a terrible burden. I will speak to Mother Elizabeth to see if there's anything more she can do for you. I understand the magnitude of what I'm asking. Thanks anyway, sir. Why would you want me to kill you? Sir? He looks too weak to keep talking. He seems to be asleep. I guess I gotta go back and get that morphine, huh? Fuck. I gotta go back to the nun's room. Shit. Now I gotta kill a man. Come on. I mean, but he asked me to, but still. I don't like that. Oh, if you hear me clicking, it's because I'm I make I discovered it makes a. It makes a. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among one among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Okay. Gotta get that morphine. I gotta I gotta get. The, I, it won't let me get it. Oh, I screwed it up. I screwed it up. I was supposed to tell him that, oh, crap. I screwed it up. Damn it. I screwed it up. Fucking hell. See, me being a, a good Samaritan screwed it up. I'm gonna be so mad if I have to start this over. Yep, I screwed it up. Damn it. I'm gonna have to start over. Oh, pause, and I'm gonna start over. Fucking hell. Okay, I fixed my goof. So now I can go get the morphine. I fixed my goof. Alrighty. Got the morphine. All right. Now we gotta go put this man to rest. All right, let's head on over. Dun 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 dun.
Oh boy. <clears throat> oh. He's not there. There is a note on the bed. Baldwin lies. Um. Excuse me? What the hell do you mean, Baldwin lies? We're just gonna have to go out there and talk to him, ain't we? Oh. Noises coming from inside the coffin. What the hell? A locked, badly finished coffin. It seems that whoever made it was a bit rushed to fix to fi finish it. Um. Well, I can't open it. doing um hello sir excuse to me tell me about monsieur i can't right rightly say after all these years i've never seen the man who knows maybe he doesn't exist i should let you get back to your work excuse the interruption mr baldwin i'll leave you with your work have a nice evening uh you too Looks like it's toolbox. I wonder if there's anything useful in it. I might be able to take a look if I keep him distracted. Hmm. Tell me about this place. <clears throat> well, the construction of this building was ordered by an Episcopal... Bishop of Aberdeen in 1805. Tell me about Aberdeen. It was the place where I was born and raised. One of the biggest cities in Scotland. If you look there toward northeast, you'll see King Chapel's Tower is the highest point of the city. Oi, you seem a bit distracted, Mr. Seth. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, excuse, excuse the interruption, Mr. Baldwin. I'll leave you with your work. Have a nice evening. What the hell? Please don't touch my things. What the f- <laughs> I didn't even get nothing! Son of a bitch. Tell me about Aberdeen, damn it. Don't worry about that. I'll leave it with your work. Bastard. All right, let's keep going. All right. Let's get this nail tooth, nail tool. The darkness of his eye. His body is petrified. He has a look of sheer terror in his eyes. Oh my god, but what has happened? Talk, talk to me. All right, I gotta go back inside. Gotta go back inside. Let's look in this front desk. A bright ornate key. Give me that. Thank you. So now we can go in the store. Oh, but I have a key. Oh, yeah. I got the key. We're going inside.
Don't look into his eyes. Huh? Because dwells in his eyes. Huh? The deepest darkness. I am quite confused. Quite confuzzled. Come in, my son. Do you think you could hide these books from me? Did you think you could hide these books from me? They are just classic literature books, father. Socrates and Aristotle. Silence. Instruments of falsehood, you mean. Fallacies coming from the snake. Now, son, get on your knees and raise your arms. Uh. Hey! Apologize to the Lord. Ow, dude, pray to the Lord. What in the hell? Malum inse? Is that what that says? What in the heck is happening here? Oh! I have the bird. Oh! Stop that. Lord, your eyes burn me. I don't deserve mercy nor forgiveness. Oh Lord, have mercy on my soul. Who are you sending me? Is death to whom you are sending me, are you handing me over? Has my hourglass already run out of sand? Uh, I can't click. What the hell? Damn it, I gotta refresh. Ugh. Jesus, I hate this. Am I gonna have to walk through that hallway again? Come on now. I hope I'm not choppy. I might be because I keep moving, but hopefully I'm not. <clears throat> <clears throat> My voice is getting shot because I've been talking for a while now. I'm not used to this. <clears throat> okay. Let's continue. Okay. Father Ernest. Ernest. It's been many years since I last heard that name. Since. Oh, I see. Father, I'm here to be able to remember. You have to help me. I beg you. Please, entreaties, petitions, praying, torment, exemption. Past times bring us misfortune and pain. Father Ernest, I was one of your students. One of my students, you say? It's only the Lord who teaches us. We must all, we all must follow his ordinances and disciples. Get closer, son, come pray next to me. Um, and the makeshift altar is coated in a dense layer of wax. The candles, having almost burnt out, only barely illuminate the room. He has a large burn covering his eyes. He's completely blind. Despite his decrepitude, extreme thinness and paleness, I can still recognize Father Ernest. But he seems far away, like in another world. Glory be to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall ever... And ever shall be now my son tell the lord who is who which one is his voice the sharp sword or the wise quill the wise quill or the delicate petal uh the sharp sword the sharp sword yes yes that's it my son the lord with his sharp sword transmits us his wisdom, his power, and his punishment. 
And now, my son, tell the Lord which one is his holy path. The wise virtue, the endless blame, or the blessed penance. The wise virtue? No, no, no. Your soul lives in by the darkness. Uh... And now, my son, tell the Lord who are you, the faceless pilgrim, the gate guard, or the lost seaman. The lost seaman? Yes, yes, that's it, my son. We live lost in an endless ocean of sin and blame. <clears throat> my voice is dying. Okay. <clears throat> Now leave me alone. I have to purify my soul. Okay. I got one answer wrong, but I guess I'm okay. Oh, he can... I can't. Okay. Okay. Kneel down. Kneel. Kneel. Come on. Kneel. Kneel. Damn it. I can't move because he senses me. He can't see me, but he can sense me. Kneel at the altar. Damn it. Go, asshole. Oh, shit. I feel. Wait, you're God in heaven. I feel for you. Your light is in my eyes. I will burn them for you. Dear God in heaven, I feel myself in you. Your eyes are in my soul. I will burn it for you. Dear God in heaven, I fear myself in you. Your sword is in my hands. I will burn them for you. Dear God in heaven, I hate myself in you. <clears throat> my blame is in your heart. I will burn myself for you. What is wrong? No, 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 no. Leave. Just go. Just go. Just go. Just go. All right. We gotta go up upstairs now. We gotta go back. All right. Okay. So let's put the razor on the log. And now I can cut this. All right. This is the dormitory, I guess. And finally, our expert on philosophy, Jeremiah. We're just going to call him Seth. Fuck it. <laughs> Our expert on philosophy, Seth, shows up. Where are you, my friend? We've been looking for you. Well, as I was saying, tonight is the perfect moment for our next meeting. But I suspect that someone outside our group is secretly surve surveilling us. Who is it, Anthony? My dear friends, it's Professor Glenn. You mean Father Ernest? Certainly. No doubt about it. Therefore, dear colleagues, I've decided to change the venue for tonight's meeting. Have you noticed the lounge between the, I mean, behind the small door of the dining room? I believe convenient to borrow the key of our, for our necessities. You already know at 12 o'clock, you'll find that door open and I'll be inside the lounge. That's it, my dearest colleagues. Whatever that is. Whatever that is. Okay. I 
I remember that this is the bed where I used to sleep when I was a student here. Why are you sleeping in it? Oh, God. Mr. Rabbit was jumping through the forest in a warm spring afternoon. I don't like this. When going through a bush, Mr. Rabbit ran into Mr. Wolf, Mr. Vulture, and Mrs. Snake, who were having a heated argument. Okay. Mr. Rabbit, curious, asks them, Dearest, why are you arguing in this beautiful and cheerful spring afternoon? Mr. Wolf answered politely, What we are trying to decide here is who of us will have the pleasure to eat you up. Oh. Mr. Rabbit, really scared, said, But I don't want to be eaten. I want to live. I don't like this. I really, really don't. Oh my gosh. To which Mrs. Snake answered smiling, that's impossible to happen, Mr. Rabbit, since we all, both you and us, are going to die sooner or later. Don't you think so? Uh... Mr. Vulture added, Mrs. Snake is right. We should stick to the issue at hand. It's getting late, and as you see, we do not agree. Do you want to help us decide, Mr. Rabbit? Who would you suggest as the one to let it, to, um, as the one to eat you? After thinking about it for a while, Mr. Rabbit came up with an idea and carefully said, I got it. Why not to organize the race? The first who arrives at the forest, arrives to the forest clearing, will have the privilege to eat me. No doubt Mr. Wolf can run at high speed, but Mr. Vulture can go flying and avoid any obstacle. And I'm sure that Mrs. Snake knows all the shortcuts within the forest. I guess the competition is balanced. What do you think? This is very, this is very creepy. The three predators agreed that it, that it was fair. So they started the race and they quickly disappeared. Mr. Rabbit, happy to trick them, started running at high speed in the opposite direction of the predators who, eager to prove their worth, didn't realize the trick. All right. Mr. Rabbit was far away from there and he finally felt safe, happy and proud of his cunning but suddenly there was a loud bang. There were as a loud bang, the earth shook, frightened birds flew, and everything went dark. The end. <gasps> oh! Oh, get out of there. Oh, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there. Oh, get out of there. Oh, out of there, out of there, out of there, out of there, out of there. An impossible love. There is something I've kept for myself for a long time. 
out of there. And the thing is I, that I loved you. I have always loved you. Since the first time I saw you, since the first time I held your frozen hands. Each time I move away from you, I miss your glassy, empty, dead eyes. I miss your rough hair, your grayish skin, your stench. This woman is dead, he's talking about. But our love just can't be. It's an impossible love. The end. No, not again. How long have I been sleeping? What was that all about? In the nightmare, I found a place, a place in my memories. Oh my God. I do not understand what in the heck is happening. Out of there. Where was the wait? Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. No, 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 no. In my disturbing nightmare, I was brought to this spot. It's the trap door I saw in my nightmare. Let's go. From here sprouts a horrible stench. There's something down there. Woo! Woo, here we go. Let's go. Oh! <gasps> Ooh! Ooh, there's dead bodies. Did you see it? Did you see it? It was there, just in front of me. He was screaming. What? You're the patient from oh! He shakes uncontrollably, his body racked with pain, and there is only one way to end his suffering. All the morphine. Oh. Why did they have to make that sound effect? Why? I know I didn't hear his last breath. Rest in peace. Oh, okay. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. All right. Mmm. Mmm. Whew. Punctual as always, Seth. Now that remains is to introduce our guest. You may come in now, Professor. Father Ernest. Do not do, do not worry, my friend. I invited him to join us this evening. The professor genuinely shares our curiosity, and who better to complete our group than the most renowned theologists? Moreover, we mustn't ban those who are willing to explore beyond the veil. The moment we have long awaited has now arrived. Please, all of you, take a seat and we shall begin the procedure. Soon shall the door be open and we sh may finally see what lies beyond. Now I ask that you close your eyes. You will feel a momentary prick as I inject you with the serum. Whoa, dude. Oh my God. Even after all these years, I have not forgotten your voice. You are the fourth witness. I remember. I remember now what happened. What is that we saw? 
the eye of the bird. Malam and say, what happened to us? What is it that we witnessed? You must tell me. You must make me understand what my mind cannot fathom. It was our curiosity that damned us. It's damned us. Stupid. <laughs> we opened that which should not be opened. In doing so, we, we shore in the veil that separated our world from his. In seeking vision, we were ourselves seen by the eye of the bird. The eye of the bird saw us. It remembers us. It looks for us. It calls us from its dark nest, from its abominable lair. All these years I have attempted to return to it, but I have no strength left. These poor, wretched creatures are too fragile. They lack the sight to return. None of them has returned. Only us, the four witnesses. Who are the other two? Where are they? They disappeared as you did. I haven't heard from any of, of you, but I was seized by curiosity. It absconded with my faith and deprived me of sanity. Oh Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. Nothing remains. All that is left is surrender. Surrender to him. Gravely we have we sinned and now our, absolute, our only absolution is to burn. To burn in the flames. What are you doing? Malum? Oh! <gasps> in. Oh! Say. He burned himself to death. Oh! <gasps> Whoa! What is happening? What is happening? Is he bearing, is he bearing Seth alive or something? It sounds like he's bearing Seth. It sounds like he nailed him into something and, is, and he buried him. He buried Seth. Oh, wow. Yo. I think he buried Seth. I think he knocked Seth out and buried him outside. Whoa. Well, with that being said, my voice is not dead. I thought it was, but I guess I just had to clear my throat. Oh boy, this is getting really, really good and interesting. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I will be continuing this tomorrow. I don't know how many chapters this is, but um, I will be continuing this game tomorrow. So, yeah, so stay tuned to that. I mean, stay tuned for that. And as always, stay sweet and gold loves, and I will see you in the next video.